Hey guys, Supercar Street Racing here, sitting in the brand new updated home theater room. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Anchor Cosmos Max 4K. We're going to be doing a little bit of looking at the menu system, some picture quality, and we're going to let you know what we think about it. It's sitting right up there, so why don't we get started and take a look at this thing first with a physical look at it. All right, so we got the lights on in the brand new refurbished home theater room right now to take a look at the Anchor Cosmos Max. And the first thing I want to show you is the star field projected on the bottom of the projector. So yeah, my projector sits on a shelf with frosted glass and it's upside down. But this projector is really designed and it's a pretty cool design. It's probably the best looking projector on the market and it's actually designed to be portable if you wanted to. It has a 2.1 uh, system, sound system built in, which sounds amazing. Um, and I'll play that for you here in a little bit. It is true 4K native. It uses pixel shifting, I believe. It's LED, so there's no bulb. The bulb life is about 30,000 hours. Now, once that bulb dies, the projector is basically a trash. So you're going to have to buy a new projector when that bulb dies. So you just need to be ready for that. It is not repairable. They don't replace them yet. So just beware. Now, stepping up here to the, the shelf, here's a good look at the top of the projector. It's actually the bottom where you can see the mounts. You might not be able to see them there, but there's mounts for a projector stand or an ANSI projector mount. But you can see here uh, the thickness compared to my hand. It's pretty thick, and I believe that's because it has speakers built in. It's got a sub and two speakers with excellent sound quality. Really, I mean, it's probably the best sound I've heard from a standalone device like a projector. It has two HDMI inputs, and it does support HDR10 and true 4K video. So, let's take a look at this thing from when it boots up. All right, let's get the light shut off here and let's power on the projector. Now we are running through a Pioneer VSX 933 receiver, which supports HDR10 and 4K. You can see there we got the Nebula logo. Now that was a quick boot up. Usually it takes much longer to boot up and I think it's because I didn't allow it to shut down the whole entire way. Usually it takes about 15 to 20 seconds to boot up and you see the Android logo, but yeah, I think it didn't go all the way into power down mode So let's try that again. All right, we're gonna try this one more time See if we get a full power up No, we still didn't but just FYI it does take 15 to 20 seconds you see a animated Android logo and then it boots right up to this home screen. And you can see right here from the home screen that we are running Android TV. So to get apps, you actually use the Google Play Store. That's where you get all your apps. And notice I am signed into the Google Play Store here. Now, I don't use the projector as a source for um for apps i have a fire stick 4k that i am using you can easily use the native apps on the projector to do everything that you want to do no problem whatsoever doing that however i have everything set up in my uh fire stick 4k and i have cody set up there so i would rather use that and there is the receiver down there that's the pioneer VSX 933 full 4k full HDR 10 although it took me some time to figure out how to get the HDMI into enhanced mode I just figured that out five minutes ago and I've had the projector for almost four days now let's take a look at the menus all right checking out the menu here it looks just like any other real device that we have nowadays and you can set up uh, personalized recommendations. There's your home screen. There's your uh, search screen. Or you can use the mic on the remote. I'll show you the remote here when I get the lights turned back on. So let's go into the settings and check out what our settings do here. 
First of all, we see network and internet. So the device does not, I don't believe it has an ethernet connection, but I don't recall. I have to go back and look at that for you. But our, I am connected to uh, five gigahertz um, Wi-Fi. I don't see wired available, but I, I, it might have an ethernet. I'm surprised I wasn't uh, more aware of that. My accounts are signed in, projector settings. All right, so here in our projector settings, we set the wall color. It is white. This is where you turn on HDR. Now, in order for HDR to work, you need to have HDMI 2.0 enhanced turned on on your television. It took me, that's what I was saying, it took me a really long time to figure out that that was off. And my Xbox was not detecting HDR10 available for display so once i figured out that the receiver was the culprit i was able to google it online and find the setting to switch the receiver on to enhanced hdmi now keystone correction is basically how you adjust the picture to pin it to the um ends here if it's sort of not hitting the ends of your screen now it says keystone correction off but that's because i'm using manual keystone correction there so once I got the projector up on the shelf up here, I then went into Keystone. I did auto. I wasn't quite, it was good. It, it does work well, but I wasn't quite happy with it. So I moved it to manual Keystone correction. Um, actually using the quadrilateral Keystone collection, correction, which allows you to adjust each corner to pin it. It's called corner pinning on a lot of projectors. Zoom is basically exactly what it says. If it's too big for the screen, you just zoom it down. And I am at an 88% zoom at, I think I'm at, uh, I can't remember the feet that I'm at, nine and a half feet away or 10 feet away. Autofocus is, is pretty cool. It definitely works amazing. You hit it, it takes about five seconds and it autofocuses. Projector mode auto. This means if you flip the projector over, which mine is inverted. So mine's rear projection and inverted. You can just put it on auto. It has some kind of sensor inside that knows that it's inverted and upside down. So it flips the picture. So you have to do that because otherwise your picture might be upside down. Let's go to picture settings. So there's our brightness and our contrast, which I have on default. And then you can go into your advanced settings and set everything manual, saturation, hue, gain, temperature, and gamma, which I have not touched in the picture quality is amazing. Let's go back. So this is if you're using uh, output from the HDMI cable to feed a television or a receiver. This is if you're going to use the optical out to feed a receiver or a television. So this is where I first was trying to figure out how to get HDR10 working. HDMI 2.0 has to be on for that, but my receiver was blocking it because it wasn't on HDMI. HDMI, uh, sorry, enhanced HDMI. So that's just how you go to the input. Let's go back to settings. And we were on HDMI. Not sure what memory detection is. I just leave it on HDMI. CEC is so that the device can feed back audio to your television and control your television. You can play with those settings as you wish. So this allows you to pair a device with the speaker via Bluetooth and play music. Here's your applications. So any apps you download. Here's all your device preferences. So we see here, if we go to, if you're looking for system update, it's under device preferences, then about, and you click system update, check. And I did update the projector when I got it. You can name your projector, restart it. Here's the status. 
shows you all the network information, the MAC addresses, shows you the model number, what firmware version you're on. It's running Android Pi. Shows you the Android security patch level just like your phone does. Shows you your kernel version and then your build version. Date and time, we're on automatic, Eastern time zone. Language, obviously English US. We're using the Google keyboard, all right, sound. So you can turn your system sounds off and on. And you can change your device surround sound options if you're using this to supply sound, which we're not. We're using the receiver with a Fire Stick 4K. Tells you how much you have left in your storage for the device, 12 gigs. Home screen customization, you can customize your channels. You can select and deselect which channels you want on. You can enable video preview so when you're hovering over something it will preview. Same with audio. You can set up discovery, your apps, and then you can look at your licenses for your open source. Now so this is for your LED on the projector. So if you, this is for the logo, so see, off, on, Starfield, off, on. So your Google Assistant settings, it's actually on. Who wants safe search if you want to try to get porn? Chromecast. So this allows you to cast from any Chromecast device to the projector. Screensaver. You can change it from a backdrop to colors. When to start it. How long to put the device to sleep. Or you can just preview it now. There's what's set. Shows you the time, the location services, uses Wi-Fi, your usage, tells you you can send your usage to Google, who cares, security, so you can turn on unknown sources, you can verify apps before you install them so you don't install malware. Here's your accessibility contrast. You can turn on uh, accessibility option. You can turn on high contrast. Do text to speech. You can do talk back services and other services options there. And you can reset your preferences there. Under remotes, you can add a Bluetooth accessory. And I think that's the remote there for the anchor, which is in my hand right here. And that is it for the settings. Just wanted to let you guys know also, there is an app for the Nebula projector to um, control it and help set it up available in the app store. I did open up the Nebula manager here, trying to figure out what that was. And I'm not sure what that does, but um, I have not used it. Looks like it can be updated though. Let's update it. All right, now be able to simple tool to create another app shortcut on your Android TV. And I want to take a look at YouTube now with you guys. Now this is the native YouTube app. And if we go to 4K. Four K HDR. Let's check this out. So if you go here to the YouTube info. You can see that it's 2160p HDR. 
Now, I want to show you guys one thing here. My receiver is off. This audio is coming from the projector. And it sounds absolutely awesome. I mean, it sounds like it's in front of me, honestly. Now, if you're not used to HDR, you might think that the colors are a bit saturated, which you can change in the projector settings. So again, this probably looks a bit oversaturated to you. This is 4K HDR from YouTube. Native app on the projector. Take a look at some other ones. And the phone is shooting in 4K, but I haven't figured out how to make HDR translate to through Premiere into YouTube when I upload my videos. But here's another 4K. Let's see if it's in 4K. It, it, oh, it's not HDR though. Let's go find one in HDR. This says HDR. It says in YouTube when it's in HDR. So you gotta look at the channel up here, more. See 2160p HDR? The picture quality is absolutely insane. It's, 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 I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's better than the theater because 104, in, this is 104 inch diagonal. Even IMAX doesn't look like this. Maybe 3D might be better, but that's kind of phased out now. Nobody's using it. It's kind of a dead format. So that's 4K HDR directly from the projector, not passing through my receiver. Now let's take a look at some other stuff. All right, let's take a look at using external inputs on the projector. So we go to the top. We got to go home first, though. And I forgot where the home button is because it's dark in here. All right, so we get to the home. Go to settings. Oh, sorry, went to the wrong one. Go to inputs. Input one is my receiver. And it says no signal because my Xbox shut off. Powering on my Xbox. And my Xbox is back on. Let's go to the home screen. Let's go to my games and apps. Well, I thought I did. And let's see all of them. Let's go over to Asphalt. So after I was able to figure out how to get HDR10 working, the games look absolutely crazy amazing. And this is uh, Asphalt Legends. Loading. Now, of course, you can actually use the apps on the Xbox as well. You can use the, uh, the YouTube app there, and it's the same difference. It just runs through my receiver. Um, so I have 5.1 surround. I don't know why it exited, but yeah, it exited right back out. But yeah, the gaming on the on the opt on the uh, anchor 4k projector looks absolutely cool I mean it's very awesome we'll be right back when it loads and here is the game of course I can't play and record at the same time so I'm just letting you guys get a look until I crash sound is actually pretty amazing too even though this video is not about that
There's a look at 4K HDR gaming. Let's load another game. Here's Halo Infinite. Which I have no idea how to play yet. Because I haven't used my... <laughs> I haven't used this bot Xbox hardly at all. You can only play multiplayer on the... On the uh, demo. Let's see if it'll load. It's looking for a quick play. Connecting. People are going to be mad at me because I'm going to go on there and not do anything, get killed, kill the whole team. Loading. Other players loading. Yeah, so I had this Xbox for a while and I haven't really used it that much. I'll resume when other people get loaded. Alright, it says match starting. Which I have no clue how to play and I can't play with one hand anyway. It shows you the player. Wow. The graphics on this game are absolutely insane. People are going to hate me in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult to play with one hand, but you get the gist of HDR 4K gaming. It's amazing. It looks so good, right? Can you get killed? Yep. The sound is crazy, too, with the surround. This good guy can't even kill me, and I'm not even, like... I'm not even playing. All right, we're going to look at some other stuff now. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at an external input. This is actually the Fire Stick 4K. I just wanted to show you guys like a little sample without getting a copyright strike or something. But um, show you a few seconds of like uh, 4K Tomorrow War before I get copyright stricken. So that is... Tomorrow War, and you can see HD, HDR at the bottom. Now that my receiver finally is set up for HDR, because uh, the setting was wrong, we can now take advantage of this. So yeah, the picture quality is absolutely insane on this. I'm impressed with the overall picture quality of this projector. I came from an Epson 1040 home cinema and the contrast is way better on this projector. The overall picture quality obviously is double the resolution. It looks so much better. Um, I do like all the features on the Anchor. The only complaint I have, the only complaint, and it's a minor one, is that there is a light over like kind of an over display you can see right here it's a cut off right there so even if you have the picture um cropped out there's an over display of light that runs and i saw it on some of the reviews so that's something they should that's probably hardware addressable not software addressable so i don't think it's fixable with a firmware update let's take a look at another 4k feature Taking a look at YouTube now in the Fire Stick, which if you could see the display there, you could see that it says Fire Stick. So now the receiver and the Fire Stick are controlling the projector. Now here is a supposedly 4K clip. Let's see if it actually is. 
It is, and it's HDR. We're looking at a trailer, so there's no copyright infringement here, peoples. Looks absolutely fantastic. Love the Iron Man reference there. Let's take a look at another one. Let's see, we got Matrix Resurrections here. And I can't explain to you how sharp the picture is even on the title screen there. All right, the phone might have cut off on that last clip, but uh, I wanted to show you guys the receiver here for a second. Now we have the lights on. So this is the Pioneer VSX 933. And I have had this for a couple years now. And I do have one issue with it. If I don't switch the power off, sometimes it will not have audio when I power it back on. I think something is starting to fail in there, and of course it's way out of warranty. Nice receiver though, it's full HD, full 4K, full HDR, does everything, totally impressed by it. The speakers are JBL studio monitors, and a advent center channel. I have surround in the ceiling up there for the surround zone. And of course here is the anchor projector sitting on a glass shelf because I just like the look of that rather than a stand and then of course there's the logo which you, it's it's frosted glass so you can't see through it but yeah so all wired up to the ceiling right there the anchor cosmos max 4k portable projector which it that's debatable in the sun you need some kind of darkness for this thing. It's LED. Um, it's never going to be as bright as a standard bulb projector or a laser projector. So if you're going to use it outside, it's got amazing sound. Highly recommend it for its picture quality and its sound quality. Built-in 2.1 audio. It's got 2.1 audio and I think the speaker, I can't remember who makes the speakers, but the sound quality of this projector alone is phenomenal the picture quality is amazing like i said my one complaint is the light overspill even when you're cropped you see the light outside of the thing but it's not annoying you don't really see it unless you really look for it so i wouldn't let that stop you from buying the projector i would get this projector i would actually even buy it at new price but i did get this refurbished for 1099 dollars had no issues with the refurb at all um, as far as features go, well, I'm not using a lot of the built-in features, but there's enough there for you to get by and not have to have an external device. You don't need a fire stick. You don't need an Apple TV. You can survive with what's in the projector. You can download all your apps and you can just run everything straight from the projector. And if you have a receiver like that one, you can use CEC and feed audio from the projector back to the receiver with the CEC controls. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments section. And I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel. I'm enjoying making content for you guys. I really enjoyed the home theater makeover. And I hope you guys like continue to support the videos. And if, I, like, I'd love to help you guys if you want uh, help with your home theater setup or electrical, I do electrical as well. And uh, it'd be fun. So I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you buy the Anchor Cosmos Max. There it is right there. There's the box. And if you do, I hope you click through my link in the description. Because I will make a dollar or two off of it and support the channel. And I'll see you guys again for the next video.